Does it feel like two years have passed to you? Mm-mm. No. How does it feel? Could be yesterday. I don't know where the two years have gone. Hey everyone, this is going to be unlike a typical SBSK video. We're actually driving to Kane's parents' house. And for those of you who don't know, Kane is our old friend who passed away just about two years ago after a nine-month battle with a DIPG brain tumor. I did what I wanted to do. I did what I had to do, I guess. But now, um, you know, if, if I heal, cool. If I pass away, that's cool too. I also flew out to Louisiana to visit his brother who's currently in college. So grief to me is more of a mind game to me. Uh, it's more of you start thinking about him and you get sad, you know, or you can start thinking about him and get happy. You know, the, it's all about which tunnel, which pathway you decide to take. Do you want people to talk to you about Kane and ask you questions about him? Of course, yes. The reason why is because um, he's a part of our family, whether he's here with us physically or not. And I think of him every day, and he's always on my mind. Do you want people to talk to you about Kane? Oh yes, absolutely. Do you find that most people feel comfortable asking questions, or do they kind of find it's taboo? I think a lot of people think that it's taboo. I, honestly, um, I think they think if they mention Kane's name that I may be sad or offended or something. How do you feel when people bring up Kane and stories about how he impacted them and the joy that he brought to others? It makes me feel good. You know, I like by me talking about him and keeping him, it's almost like keeping him alive. What have you learned about grief since Kane's passing? I have learned that there's no rules. There are no rules. There's no timetable. Um, and there's no plan. There's, I'm a planner for the most part, I'm spontaneous sometimes. But there's no plan. The days that the grief comes, it comes like a hurricane. <laughs> um, it's 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 never easy. Can't believe it's been two years, but in, at times it feels so short, so long, it, and that's that's one of the funny things about the grief. I think is is how it's constantly changing. It's not always consistent. I think that grief is just a season, and sometimes it can be a season that stays for the rest of your life, and I feel like that's where it is with me. I've done my part, like, if I were to pass away, it'd probably be easier on everything, everyone. Honestly, I'm completely fine with passing away. He was ready. He was full on ready to go. I just want him to be at peace. I want him to be pain free. My mom was, we can give him some medicine. What can we do to help him? The day it happens, it's just like this visceral crying and screaming and yelling for hours. Hours. I learned how to li live with it a little bit and not move on, but you know, know that he wouldn't want me to be stuck and dwelling on the fact that he's not here. My mom, on the other hand, she's still gonna struggle a little bit and that's okay. She's, she's getting through it and She's still trying to learn. <laughs> She's getting crying. We made the most of every single minute, every second. Um, and then all of a sudden, it's gone. They're gone. And you don't know what to do with yourself. You have this schedule of medications and checking on them and going to do this and doctor's appointments and you know all the things that you were coordinating you know your massage and your therapies and your 
and now you don't have to do those things anymore and you know someone has to come in and get the bed out of the house and get the machinery gone and I didn't want anything to do with that. I worked with death being a detective and a trooper um, with accidents and stuff and then being a detective with the Kentucky State Police I worked with a lot of murders and different stuff and um, so I'd witnessed young people dying and um, never thought that I would um, endure the death of my son. You helped me to, you know, not go for like a week without showering or, <laughs> you know, a couple of days maybe of yeah. like being quiet and, and that type of thing. But then, you know, hey, what are you doing today? What's on your plan and, and what's your, not agenda, but you know, what do you, what do you want to accomplish? even if it's just one thing for the day, right, in, in that time frame. And I appreciated that. Just because I'm not crying with you doesn't mean that um, that's bad. What have you learned about the different ways everybody processes grief? It's all different. I mean, every single one of us, you know, Kirsten and I are completely different on, on the way we grieve, the way we think about him each day. It's all different. Would you say just because of the way you're processing grief is different, that doesn't mean that the grief, the amount of grief is different. Correct. Yeah, I don't believe that it's, the amount is different. I just think that it's, um, it's shown differently. Dementor was Kane's service dog, and um, they grew a loving to each other immediately. Um, if you can see, I think you probably saw some of the photos, and you actually were there when the dog was laying in the bed with him how they slept together it was amazing. This is Moose. That's code name for people that see him. They say, hey Moose. Um, that way, his real name is Dementor. But we don't call him, we don't want people to call him that um, when we're out in public. Has Dementor been a part of your grieving process together? I think so. For um, I, I think because the dog was so special to Kane that there's a connection. The dog was definitely sad for a little while after Kane died. I have this theory that the tumor pushed on his mature side of his brain and made him become a lot more mature because <laughs> uh, really he was. He started getting really into his faith and really into, you know, everything else in the world. Are you still praying for a miracle? Yeah. But what does a miracle to me look like? Um, and that's going to happen. And hopefully, I don't know how. No one knows how it works. But if I can, like, watch football, you know, it would be cool to have my experiences and then watch football. Um, sounds kind of creepy. One of the last times I spoke to Kane, he said... The toughest thing is not knowing if he'll be able to watch over his loved ones because he, he doesn't know mm -hmm. what's next. Right. Do you think he is watching over you? Uh, sometimes I do because, you know, I try not to believe in that, uh, you know, like dragonflies flying or, you know, little coincidences. But sometimes it'll be, you, you'll be walking and one little dragonfly will land on your car or something. And it's kind of like, really? Is that really, you know? You start to think and it's like, all right, you know, and things start going bad and you just kind of lean on that hope of him being there for you and things start to change and get better. Who would you watch? Um, well, number one, I'd watch my brother, mother, and father. Um, you know, family comes first. I'm engaged. Uh, me and Kendra are going to get married next October. What are you two most looking forward to in the future? <laughs> We're both, I think we're both looking forward to getting married. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. It's kind of funny because I guess I always pictured, I pictured me and him, excuse me, me and him going to college together, me and him, you know, doing our weddings kind of thing, you know, doing the best man speech kind of spiel. The whole, you know, the whole brothers thing was what I always envisioned, and now that I don't have it, it's kind of like, well, 
Guess I'll just imagine. So earlier today, we were filming a piece, me and Alyssa, reflecting on Kane's memory, and I got a little teary-eyed. Mm -hmm. Are you okay if people still have that reaction? And they feel a bit of sadness just because Kane was such a good friend and brought them a lot of joy. Oh yes, I mean, that doesn't bother me um, one bit. I mean, that makes you feel good that, um, that he's touched somebody, you know, that special. One thing I realized while I was preparing to make this video and examining all of Kane's old videos is how much our experience with him reshaped my concept of death. I used to think of death as more of a finite thing. Your time on earth is done. Your impact is done. What I'm realizing is that existence is more of a fluid thing. Like Cain, his physical body is gone, not here anymore. I don't know. I know as much as anybody else if he has some kind of perception where he's looking over us. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But what I do know is his impact continues to live on. His legacy. His legacy. And that made me realize that death isn't really finite. Our time... And that's a beautiful thing to realize. Wish I could just like run back in the ocean. Like, I can't do that right now because I'm kind of weak. My eye doesn't close. So, mm -hmm. it's just, it's kind of those things. It's like, dang, I wish, you know. What's your favorite memory of Kane? My favorite memory. I might have to think about this one for a second. He wanted to go swim in the beach in the ocean. <laughs> we have video of it. And I won't post the video. <laughs> Why not? Maybe, maybe eventually someday we will. But uh, we had put the life vest on him and he wanted to go out there and, and he was very wobbly on his feet. At some point, Kane just was like plopped in in his life vest and Kane couldn't really move anyways. And Keegan and I both had a hand on him. The water was freezing and he fell and I immediately thought we were gonna have to do CPR on him and get, um, get the water out of his lungs. And there you just see him like just rolling and the waves just hitting his face. And next thing I know, I mean, he just, the waves are coming in and he's getting pummeled. And, and I feel like he's gonna drown. My mom's freaking out and she's like, get him, he's, he's blah, blah, blah. And so we go and get him and Kane's like, what are you doing? Let go of me. He's like, I'm fine. And my, my mom's like, pull him out. I'm like, he doesn't want to be pulled out. <laughs> he wants to stay and keep getting hit by the waves. She's like, oh. <laughs> so then we sat and watched him get hit by the waves and he enjoyed it. And then we brought him back up when he was done. That was one of his last beach days and one of his last swims, you could say. I just want people to know that I'm fighting. I might not lose, but I might pass away. But that doesn't mean I lost because it's not about how it happened. It's about how I kind of push through it and do the things I want. You'll get through the day and it's, you remind yourself, did I think of Kane today? Did I, you know, did he cross my mind? Did I, you know, if I, did I forget to wear my band? What, what did I do? And that, at that point you start to go down this whole trap of, trying to, you know, you start to feel sorry that you didn't pay attention and feel guilty and that's not what I want. Um, so, so yeah, sometimes I have to let myself get there to catch myself back up and remember that I still got a brother that isn't here anymore. What I will say that I've done for myself is I've been going to counseling uh, for two years now. I got in as, as soon as I could I knew I was gonna need psychotherapy and psychological counseling to manage myself and my mental health. Um, that's the best thing I ever did. How beneficial has that been? Uh, I can't even tell you. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I know. I know my friends and family thank me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever told you, and we've stayed in touch the past two years, but. Yeah. We think of him all the time too, and we talk about him, and we love him, so mm -hmm. we just wanted to stop by and let you know that. I appreciate that. I really do. I think that for Kane, um, he was such an integral part of 
of course our lives, but other people's lives, that he, he would want to be remembered. I think the best way to end this video is with some words of wisdom from the man, Cain himself. So thank you for watching this, everyone. And Cain, we still love you. We still remember you. And we really miss you. What would you say if you could put a message in a time capsule mm -hmm. that your distant family will open Ooh. in a hundred years? You're here for a reason, right? No one knows what that reason is, but you can make it kind of your own. So, if you're not doing something, do something. Um, it's very, that's very general. Do you believe you know your reason? Heck no. Actually, yeah. I'm... I'm here to educate people about DIPG and live life the way I want to. During the year that Kane was battling DIPG, mm -hmm. he actually started a nonprofit to help other people battling the same diagnosis, mm -hmm. which I think just really summarizes everything about Kane that he wanted to help other people while he was going through so much. What can you tell us about that fan, that foundation and where it's at today? So uh, the foundation name is Cannonballs for Kane, and he started it when he was a senior in high school. He, um, he had an idea of doing two things. One was to raise money for research um, for the cancer itself, and then the other was to um, help support families um, with a survivor support program.